52. I already screwed this up. Welcome back to another episode of Mixology and Mortgages with Hatchman. So today I want to bring up a question and really go into some numbers when it comes to whether you should be buying a car or a house, especially if you're a first time home buyer and don't own either, or let's say you do own a vehicle and you're maybe thinking about buying a house, should you buy a new car before you go in and get that house? This one came up the other day, I had a client reach out to me he said he was looking to potentially get pre-qualified, but he was also trying to weigh his options on whether he should buy a car and was concerned on you know, getting credit pulled and what those numbers would look like. So he asked for my advice. So I want to show you what I showed him. So we're gonna take a look at the options when it comes to what purchasing a car may do to your buying power when looking to purchase a home. So first off for our examples, let's say you make $20 an hour, 40 hours a week, 52 weeks in a year works out to 41,600 a year. So monthly, that is 3467 a month in income, okay? Now let's talk about our debts. So again, we, we haven't purchased a car yet, so let's just talk about your existing debts. For our purposes today, we're gonna say there is a $2,000 credit card that has a monthly payment of 25 bucks a month. Let's say you owe 3,000, on another credit card with a payment of 30 bucks a month. And then finally, let's just say you've got another one for $5,000 and that one is 50 bucks a month. So in total debt, all we do is we add up 25 plus the 30 plus the 50. So we have $105 in debt, right? Here's what we gotta figure out, right? So now that we know, and I, I did this exercise in another video, what we do is you take your gross monthly income and what you're gonna do is you wanna times that by 0.45. So we're gonna take 3467 times 0.45, that's gonna give you 1560. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract that 105 in your existing debt and that is gonna give us 1455. So now we know this is currently how much mortgage you can afford. We went through this in a previous video. Be sure to check it out. We now know that 1455 is the max mortgage. So you go out and buy a car and that car payment is 400 bucks a month. Well, what happens, right? Well, now we have to subtract that from the 1455. So now you can only afford 1,055. And if you remember, I talked about the difference in buying power when it comes to the dollar amount and the monthly payments. Long story short, it's not 100% accurate, but every 20K equals about $100 a month in the payment, right? So if we just knocked $400 off with that car, what did that do to our buying power, right? 400 bucks a month, 20,000 times four, 80 grand. So now we just lost $80,000 in buying power because you got a new car. Now again, this exercise is for all types of people. If you make more money and depending on your debt, if the numbers are okay and it's still gonna fit in your budget, you're gonna be all right. This is something you wanna look at because it will definitely impact your buying power if you purchase a car, right? So we know that that, that debt, that new monthly debt for whatever your auto payment is, is gonna get added into that debt ratio. So. Just keep that in mind, there's not a 100% right answer on if you should wait to buy a car or if you should not, it's just it is going to affect your buying power based on how much money you make and whatever your existing debts being reported to credit might be. So I hope this exercise was helpful. Now let's get some fun. I found the perfect cocktail to go with this video. This one is called The Big Spender, right? Because we're talking about buying a car, buying a house, Either way, you're gonna be spending some money. So this is a cocktail that's been around for a while. I've made a few minor changes to it because typically in the big spender, it's, it's a tequila cocktail that is topped with champagne. The original one, it's not any champagne, it's Cristal. I didn't feel like dropping 300 bucks on a Cristal <laughs> champagne for this video, so we're gonna use some Chandon. So we start off with, whoa, one ounce of Patron Silver Tequila. You're gonna get one ounce of that. You can use whatever tequila you would like. I'm a big fan of Patron, I think it's really good. 
It's good by itself, but it also goes really well in cocktails. Now the second ingredient, typically for this one, you would not use the Patron uh, orange liqueur. There's a different type of liqueur um, called Le Creole, and that's the one that's more popular for this specific cocktail, but it, I didn't have it, and this is what I had. So we're gonna use one ounce of good orange liqueur. Again, you can use pretty much anything, as long as it's orange and it's a good quality. Because again, it's called the big spender. We got some money going into this cocktail. We're gonna add one ounce of a blood orange. These are so cool, I gotta show you what these look like on the inside. If you've never seen a blood orange, there. it's basically just an orange, but it's red on the inside. So check that out, super cool, right? Get one ounce of that. I still like to measure this just because you never know. You never know how much juice the orange is going to yield. It's a good thing we did because that one only got us about half an ounce of that half an orange. So we're definitely gonna need the other one. I'll short on that a little bit too. Let's just get that in the glass. Okay. One ounce of blood orange juice. Smells so good too. Get a little bit in there, get that full ounce. Beautiful. We're gonna add ice and stir. So again, get lots of ice in that glass. The, the more ice, the colder it is. Even though I'm constantly spilling it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Stir it up, stir it up. So again, just three ingredients again. Blood orange juice, orange liqueur, and tequila. We're gonna spin that around, get it nice and cold. And then we're gonna pour it into a champagne glass. So any sort of fluted glass. Again, you've heard me talk about it in the past. But glass where I don't really think. That, does it matter? I think it does for some things, not for all things. So let's get this guy in there. How pretty that is already. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and then of course, we gotta have our champagne topper. Again, in the real big spender, they are using Cristal, but if you're saving money to buy that first house, don't go buy Cristal until after we've closed on it, then you can celebrate <laughs> with the big spender. If you're still budgeting, let's use some uh, budget champagne like the, like the Chandon here today. Let's pop the bottle. Whoa, -ho -ho. <laughs> yes. So this is a rosé brut. All we're gonna do is we're gonna top that lovely cocktail that we already did. Just get a nice few bubbles in there just towards the top. And then we gotta take it to the next level. You get another little slice of that blood orange. This time we're gonna use just the peel, similar to like in an old fashioned. We're gonna slice that, strike a match. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna express this orange right over the top, see? Make a nice little flame. Get those essential oils all in the drink. Beautiful. Toss it in there. And there you have it, folks. We have the big spender. If you've got the budget, buy that car. If not, hold off until you, after you've purchased your house. This has been yet another episode of Mixology and Mortgages with Hatchman. I hope you guys enjoyed, learned lots. If you have any other suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Talk to you guys later. later.